It's a very good evening and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi. In the program tonight, we have information on how MediaTek Africa went. We visited new MTN South Africa CEO Mteto Nyati and he told us what some of his plans are for the organization. We'll also give you an update on, the, on Google's first self-driving car and how that's going. Our studio discussion tonight is with the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Professor Klingu Mkize. We are live, so find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and it's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Let's start with your social media and technology news. Now, a lot, of, a lot goes into setting up a stage for a live entertainment show or doing television production. Technologies that go into putting it together are constantly evolving, so audiences get better quality productions all the time. Network producer Buidu Melokasa went to MediaTek Africa to find out what new technologies are being introduced in the entertainment space. All these visitors are here at the MediaTek Africa Expo at a dome in Northgate to find out how the entertainment industry is improving. With technology continuously evolving, hardware downsizing and software upsizing, these expos are important for the consumers out there. Some of the visitors at the expo say they visited to see the new offering by the manufacturers. I'm here to visit uh, people that supply us with goods in this industry. Um, anything to do with brackets, um, cabling, HDMI continuation, all sorts of products that we use with our customer base. I think, I think the industry really needs something like this because it, it, it allows you to learn new innovative things, think a bit outside the box. There was a plenty of showcasing that they had come for. We're talking here from cameras to light, sound and many more cool products. Organizers say it's important to showcase technology used in film and music industry. I think it's vital, you know, the internet brings uh, people an, an ability to see what's coming up in terms of technology, but for them to really be able to, sort of, to, be able to play with it and see it and, and experience it, that's a vital element. 4K was a password at the MediaTek Africa Expo this year. This is a crispier, clearer display. What 4K is, if you think about your HD picture at home, it's literally just four times HD pictures. Unlike olden days, nowadays it's a little easier to get aerial shots. This is done with drones equipped with 4K capable cameras like this one. These cameras you'll also be able to make the impossible possible. Shots that you'd never dream of you can now do with these drones. Very easy to use, you've got first person view so you can have your iPad or iPhone set up and you can watch exactly what the drone is doing. Those that came here seem to have been impressed by what the future of television, film and entertainment looks like. I just came to see everything, like the new sound, what's in the market and stuff. As you can see, there's a lot of sound and light. Yeah, so that's why I'm here actually. Sam came for the experience. We've seen such amazing gadgets like I've never seen in my life, like the lights, the sound the different projectors, everything about this place is just incredible. I'm enjoying myself big time, eh? If you miss this year's expo in the three days that it was held at the Dome, then you will have to wait another two years to find out how the film, television and music industry are technologically evolving. New MTN South Africa CEO Mteto Nyati says democratization of the internet is important in South Africa. He says people in the rural areas and townships must be able to exploit the net as well. Nyati has just completed his first week as CEO. The strike at MTN in South Africa ended just days after Mteto Nyati took over as CEO in South Africa. The workers seem satisfied with what they've been given. The union has represented us very well. We will be recognized as employees. Our voice has been heard. Now it's time for the new CEO to get down to business. The MTN group has been showing significant growth across the African continent, but things haven't been looking so good in South Africa. Nteto's task is to change that. As he does the rounds in the company's Johannesburg offices to meet his employees, the new boss says he is up to the challenge. Within the group, some of the countries are performing differently. Uh, we found that uh, South Africa was one of those countries that did not do well last year. Mm -hmm. uh, there were many reasons behind that. And, and one of the things that I am here to do uh, is to make sure that we get back, get South Africa back on the track of growth. 
There are new players in the South African market that were not there when MTN was started. They clearly have taken a chunk out of the business away from the continent's largest mobile phone network provider. Nyati says this has called for some innovation. We now have actually two businesses, what I call the traditional business. And that traditional business, as the, as the margins are going down, we need to make sure that the costs are aligned, you know, are in line with the declining margins. So we need to trim down the cost because that business is shrinking. So we need to find new ways of doing things. We can automate things. We can do things better by asking people who are better outside to come and, and, and take some of the functions. Then there's an issue of network quality. Uh, sometimes our network quality may be having challenges here, there and there. Uh, sometimes uh, our call centers may not be as responsive. You know, those are the kind of criticism that I've had. As he works on the quality of the MTN network, he also needs to make sure that everyone can have access to the internet. How are we helping the people that are sitting in the townships or in the rural areas, you know, helping those people to enjoy the, be the benefits of this digital technology that we are bringing. MTN has also announced its plan for the installation of its high-speed fiber network in various parts of South Africa. Now, one of Google's self-driving cars was involved in an accident earlier this month. The company says three employees were injured when the vehicle was rear-ended by another vehicle. This raises questions about the safety of the technology of self-driving cars. Several employees suffered minor whiplash injuries in the July 1st incident when a vehicle rear-ended a Lexus RX450 prototype outfitted by Google with special sensors and software, which had stopped at a traffic light near the Google headquarters in Mountain View, California. The employees were sent to a nearby hospital as a precautionary measure but were not admitted, the spokesperson said. Google said it was the first such incident involving injuries in a self-driving car. The technology giant which started developing self-driving cars in 2009 said its prototype vehicles have been struck 14 times. 11 of those were rear-end collisions. The Google vehicle was not at fault in any of those incidents, the company said. Google disclosed the incident in a blog post on Thursday. Google is testing a fleet of 23 specially equipped Lexus prototypes and said it is logged more than 1 million test miles. Last month, the company began testing bubble-shaped self-driving prototype vehicles of its own designed on public roads around Mountain View, California. Let's take a look at what else has been dominating in the technology space this week. And welcome to the SABC Tech Wrap. I'm Matiba Sibanyoni. And I'm Lebukhansi Jake. And we are coming to you from the Dome in Johannesburg at the Media Tech Show. This week in the local tech space, the Uber saga continues. The taxi hailing app has offered the olive branch to the country's meter taxi industry. Following a number of reported operating tensions between Uber and South African meter taxi drivers, Uber is asking drivers to join their platform. The company said that their technology is open and pro-choice and that they are keen to offer it to a broad number of taxi drivers to boost their occupancy rate and chances for profit. The tensions have been on the rise this week with a number of Uber users alleging that they had been intimidated by meter taxi drivers. Now in international news, Hesau Tanaka will be stepping down as chief executive of Toshiba Corporations. The step down is due to irregularities in the company's books. Tanaka will not be going down alone, but along with other board members, including Vice Chairman Norio Sasaki. Now, a new technology called Wi-Fi Away is said to shrink the degree of proximity for tech lovers. The technology will be able to alert smartphone owners via Wi-Fi where they are in the same vicinity with people who have similar interests. This will be similar to an already existing technology called Beacons, which is mostly used by retailers to interact with customers via Bluetooth links. So holograms have been around for a long time, but it's often difficult to put them in reality as we only see them in sci-fi movies and very little in practical uses. Now Microsoft changed that this week. Take a look. 
Microsoft this week showcased how holograms can be used in real life ahead of their annual worldwide partner conference in the US. The Holograph Showcase was around commercial momentum in response to HoloLens, the world's first untethered holographic computing device powered by Windows 10. Now, talking about Microsoft, Motiba, the company just recently announced the launch of the Windows 10 operating system, which they say will be on July 29th. Well, that's really cool. Is it going to be locally or internationally? Well, I think it's going to be a global launch, which a lot of people are highly anticipating. The company says that the Windows upgrade will be free for Windows 7 and 8.1 users for its first year and that the operating system will release for desktop and laptop devices first then trickle down to phones and other Microsoft devices. Oh, well, that's something to look forward to. I personally totally. can't wait. I must say, the music here has been so good throughout this morning. I think so too. It's I really, happy. really like it's it. Happy to hear that. <laughs> it is. Well, that's it from us this week. I'm Mati Besudanyoni. And I'm Lebukhan Zijaki, signing out from the Media Tech Africa. Bye bye. Thank you, Lebum and Madiba. Now, Professor Shengem, he's the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications, already in studio to chat to us. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay with us. for thought in the words of Ray Davis, remember a challenge only becomes an obstacle when you bow to it. Of dedication and perseverance, Abayani Maitakori made history as one of South Africa's best performing matriculants of 2014, attaining seven distinctions. I believe that nothing should stand in your way if you, you see yourself in the future doing something great. So I just carried on and I never gave up. Though the circumstances I faced were challenging, I love challenges, so I was like, yeah man, bring it on, I can do it. Join me, Refiel Wemuiba, on Bupilong, your show about those who take on and conquer life's challenges, every Saturday at 17.30. Good evening and welcome to yet another edition of Sports Live, the show that brings you the latest local and international news, live interviews with the who's who in sport. He's the first South African to wear a yellow jersey that was at the Tour de France this year. It's the first time that we get a boxer who's recognized by the Ring magazine as the best fighter in the planet to visit our country. And he's very close to world record base. And in fact, it is a new world record. When you cross the line, what went through one's mind? None of the four of us knew it one. The scoreboard is always on the left, but all of us tend to the right. You know, we just waited for the country to go down. All right. I say. That's Sports Live, daily at 8.30 p.m. on SABC News. CBC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for joining us again. Now, in 2010, Finland became the first country in the world to make broadband a legal right for all its citizens. That's not the case here in South Africa. Analysts often share different views of why the Internet is still elite in South Africa. The Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services says it's trying to change all of this. Joining me in studio right now is the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Professor Lenguem Kiza. Hello, and thank you for being a part of our network, Professor. Okay, hi, good evening. Thank you very much for having me. All right, it's a pleasure. Now, Professor, if you can tell us as a Deputy Minister, what is your task in the Department of Postal Services? Yeah, maybe I just have to say, we are not really trying to make uh, access to internet uh, right, but uh, we're hard at work to ensure that uh, we roll out the bro broadband to the most difficult areas in line with the constitution of this country, access, you know, for mm. all. It's been slow, but I, I suppose things are moving now. Well, you know, p the policy was passed uh, in 2013, and since then, the CSIR has assisted in terms of uh, making a scientific analysis and assessment in terms of the digital gaps. 
and which I think is very, very important to start from an informed position. Hence, you will remember that this year, the president, uh, President Zuma, during the State of the Nation address, was clear in articulating the municipalities and districts which should be given a priority. And there's a budget, and so I think the clarity on the policy and separation of two departments have really given us a clear start. And from the assessments that you've done, Deputy Minister, um, do you think that this is doable? Can those areas that don't have um, good internet access get it? It's doable, depending on how you look at it. Uh, for instance, you know, if you look at the number of schools that now are connected and now we're looking at uh, health centers, which are priority sites for NHIS uh, uh, implementation from the Department of Health and what the criminal justice system is doing to make sure that the police stations, the courts are, are, are connected. I, I think we are moving at a faster rate. It's just a question of strengthening our e-strategies from a literacy point of view, training the, those frontline officers to be able to use these gadgets competently beyond uh, phoning as though it's a fixed line in the case of a mobile or just having it as a, a typing machine. Mm. But I, I suppose everyone looks to you for this because um, as much as the Department of Education, of basic education, might be giving tablets to schools, um, and as much as um, the, the health systems might, have, might be part of the e-connect system, but everyone comes to you because you need to make sure that there's adequate internet access for all of this to happen. Well, the, in terms of our policy, we are really the drivers of the digital future. From a development point of view, we have to identify opportunities. We have to look at the future, the kind of skills that are needed, and the new technologies and how we position the country. And above everything, we, uh, we have to take responsibility for ensuring that government begin to offer services online so that there could be a demand. So we, we are ahead of the game. South Africa Connect, what is this? It's an important policy in the sense that it's aiming at making South Africa an information society. Remember, we, we come from an undemocratic past, but once you talk information, especially technology, everything is out there on, in the open. We're actually now talking about internet governance, how to ensure that as young people access these gadgets, we, we, they don't go astray and focus on risky areas where they could be recruited online for all sorts of social ills. So it's an important policy and it's helping to, you know, to, to, to connect people irrespective of the, digit, uh, of the divides like urban, rural, young and old, literate, illiterate. I'm sure you have seen people who have not been to school, but they can access, they use the mobile phone mm. and now the people are e-commerce, people are doing business online. But Professor Mkise, someone might say to you that you want to censor the internet if, you, if you're speaking about um, governance strategies, no? Yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, there are all sorts of debates about that. But remember, we have a constitution which talks to rights and responsibilities. So we go to young people and say, what you cannot do around the table like this, you cannot do online. Mm. Because you cannot just use social media to humiliate and undermine the human dignity of another because that's a critical value in terms of our constitution. But I fully agree, it's something which has to be looked at very carefully because you can't open and close. If we are democratizing our society, you know, it's up to people to take responsibility as to the limits mm. of uh, access. Mm. Uh, how far are you in that process in the South Africa Connect policy? Um, I think one thing which has been achieved is what he inherited from the Department of Communication, information on the gaps. And of course, this is the first year. I mean, the, the schools, uh, let's start with telecom. Telecom has done a lot in terms of uh, rolling out broadband. Uh, they have about 147,000 uh, kilometers, uh, the cable. So that it's, a, it's a huge footprint in any one country. But of course, what we've been doing also through the schools clearly talk to possibilities where in partnership with the private sector, 
making use of the regulator, mm -hmm. making it a, 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 their service obligation, mm -hmm. we've covered quite a number of schools and we do that on a weekly basis. All right, sounds all interesting. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, Professor Hlingem Kiza. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Professor Hlingem Kiza there is the Deputy Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services in South Africa. Now, this week, we caught up with singer Danny Kay and asked him what his favorite piece of technology is. It's something that he uses when he is running. Hi, I'm Danny Kay, a musician from South Africa. I'm really loving uh, Garmin navigation running watches these days. I'm a, I'm a runner, and to track my routes and... Uh, and you know, see my speed and my progress on the road to me is an amazing thing. And I mean, Samsung are doing it now, Apple are doing it now. So any running tech is, is impressive to me. An investigation is now underway to establish whether the men were involved in other crimes. One of the men has also been linked to another shooting two weeks ago where a police officer died. This is the strongest reading since October last year. New orders led to a rise in output for the first time since November. This means that the first quarter could have ended with a new high momentum that's likely to get carried into the second quarter. An increase in oil supply from that country is likely to increase global oversupply of oil and that in turn should spell continued lower oil prices. We saw that uh, really with the adjustments in the fuel price both in March and, and now in April that consumer inflation is bottomed and it will start to rise slowly uh, going forward over the f over coming months. For all your business news, stay tuned to your favorite channel, SABC News, at 1, Monday to Friday. Welcome back. Remember that you can find us on social media. We are on SABC Network over there. Now this week, Lebusi Jake tells us what she thinks of the AG Go smartphone. This phone is developed by a South African mobile technology company, AG. Here in my hand might look like a fancy jewelry box, but it's actually a smartphone. This is the AG Mobile Ghost Phone. According to AG Mobile, a South African mobile technology company, its flagship Ghost smartphone is the first Android device with a lifetime warranty. Inside this box is a number of pretty interesting accessories that one rarely sees in other smartphone brand packages. Some of these goodies include a car charger, a 7500 mAh power bank and a protective cover. AG Ghost looks and feels like a high-end smartphone. Its outer shell kind of reminds me of the HTC One M9 phone that was featured on the show a couple of months ago. While other high-end smartphone brands run on Android 5.1 operating system, this handset uses the 4.4.2, a somewhat older version of the operating system. Nevertheless, the AG Ghost does come with applications that are on most Android devices, such as your social media applications. Its 5.5 display is a plus for those who prefer large-sized handsets. Other specifications of the AG Ghost include a 13 megapixel rear and a 5 megapixel front camera. The dual micro SIM card device has a 16 gigabyte internal storage that is expandable with a micro SD card. This device runs on a 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor. Now let's see what some people have been sharing in social media. Yesterday was Nelson Mandela Day. Many around the world spent it doing charity work. Some shared what they got up to online. Both Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs have been a huge chatting point in social media. They lost to teams from Swaziland in the inaugural Kings Cup. South Africans in social media have been excited about Tim Kubega's success in the Tour de France. The team's Stephen Cummings upstaged many to win the 14th stage. The South African rugby team, the Springboks, have been a conversation because of their loss to the Australians. Coach Henneke Mayer has said that the team will continue to move on with heads up high. 
And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We leave you with images of how some South Africans celebrated Nelson Mandela Day yesterday. From Ms. Pomela Lezondi and the rest of the team, have a good one. investigation is now underway to establish whether the men were involved in other crimes. One of the men has also been linked to another shooting two weeks ago where a police officer died. This is the strongest reading since October last year. New orders led to a rise in output for the first time since November. This means that the first quarter could have ended with a new high momentum that's likely to get carried into the second quarter. An increase in oil supply from that country is likely to increase global oversupply of oil and that in turn should spell continued lower oil prices. We saw that uh, really with the adjustments in the fuel price both in March and, and now in April that consumer inflation is bottomed and it will start to rise slowly uh, going forward.